Hey guys, time to get in on the action for the biggest moments in basketball with Prize Picks, America's number one fantasy sports app. Just select two or more players, pick more or less on their projections, place your entry, and win up to 100 times your money. Right now, Prize Picks will match your first deposit of up to $100. Just download the Prize Picks app and use the code GET100. That's code GET100 on Prize Picks for a first deposit match of up to $100. Prize Picks, pick more, pick less. It's that easy. The sun itself isn't really out today, but we have not had much of a winter as we're springing forward last week, and it's almost spring in terms of the calendar. It is spring training in terms of baseball. Bumping in with a little center field. The Twins have been blessed at that position. Oh, yeah. We're going to be blessed to talk to one of those here shortly, but we couldn't talk to anybody, Dave Cook, without our sponsors. Absolutely. Let's start with Comfort Systems, Kohler Hyundai and Kohler Toyota. Stewart Spike Sports and Trophies, Mount Royal Bottle Shop, Advantage Emblem and Screen Printing. Krause Heating and Cooling, your carrier HVAC authorized dealer. OAR Holdings, Hoops Brewing, Arola Architecture Studio, and the Blackwoods Group, including their locations, Tavern on the Hill, up by the colleges, Blackwater, right downtown, their locations in Proctor and into Harbors, and their, of course, their flagship station, the one that we go to. The London Road one that we're London, frequenters of. Absolutely. Is frequenters a word? It, it is, is now. now. Well, absolutely. Just, yeah. Speaking of frequenting, you might want to frequent Blackwoods anytime, but you can actually have them delivered to you for Easter Sunday. That family meal for $165. Serve six. Get the orders in by Friday. You can do it by contacting Jessica at 218-625-6147. The email sounds easy. Easy to remember. Easter at Blackwoods.com. Well, and again, remember that food costs are expensive as it is. If you want to value, if you value your time with your family on Easter, This is a fantastic bargain. You can sit around and visit instead of standing over the stove. Absolutely. Speaking of valuing time and wanting to visit, I get really excited every time Denard Span is on this show. Without further ado, I'm going to go right to him. Denard, I'm so excited to have you again. Good morning, my friend. Good morning. How are you guys doing? Doing well. Now, should I really say good morning? Because where are you? Because it's nine minutes after 11 here in Minnesota. But if you're East Coast time, it's it's afternoon. Good afternoon. Good Saturday to you, I guess, is a safe play. Good afternoon. Yes, good afternoon. Uh, on the East Coast, actually just leaving the beach with the family, and it's almost nice. uh, almost lunchtime for the kids. Sounds perfect, so thank you for taking the time with us. Let's talk about your time that's coming up ahead, because the Twins very graciously have announced some of their analysts for this year, and basically it's a litany of a lot of guys that I had an affinity to during their playing days and beyond. You're part of the broadcast booth now. Your excitement about that this season. You know what? I'm super excited uh, just about this opportunity. Uh, first and foremost, to to come back home, come back to where it all started for me. And uh, you know, my heart's in Minnesota, and um, it's been a long time since I've been connected to the organization. And um, you know, an opportunity uh, was was brought my way. Um, you know, I was I was uh, thrilled to to jump on it. So tell me a little bit about how that opportunity came to be, because the last time we spoke last season, we were talking about how you're adjusting to doing broadcast work with the Rays. Now Minnesotans are going to get to enjoy your broadcast abilities. How did this come into play? Well, you know, actually, I became somewhat of a of a free agent, if you will. Um, you know, I still I actually still work for the Rays. I'm doing TV for the Rays as well this year, um, but my duties, as far as being in the front office, is no longer. So it, it gave me the opportunity to explore and, and uh, you know reach out to uh, you know some of my my old friends with with the Twins and. Um, you know, it just worked out seamlessly, to be honest with you. Obviously, last year was my first year doing TV um, with the Rays. And, you know, I at first, you know, it wasn't uh, something that I was uh, thrilled about doing and, and something that um, I didn't really – I wasn't that I didn't enjoy doing it. But um, it just took some time for me to, to kind of get adjusted to it. And as the season went along, I, you know, I began to have fun. And um, once again, like I said, uh, you know, with conversations opening up with uh, – uh, some of my good friends with the Twins, you know, it just led one thing led to another, and and you know the opportunity came about. You know, Denard, I'm wondering what Twins fans can expect of your style because we've had storytellers <laughs> like Jim Cotton, Burt Blylevin, yeah, Glenn, yeah. Glenn Perkins is a numbers guy. Where does Denard yeah. span fall? That's a good. That's a great question. Guess what? We're all going to be surprised because Denard Span doesn't even know <laughs> what my style is. <laughs> I'm just going. You know what? You know what everybody keeps telling me just be yourself. Just go on TV, be yourself, and, you know, just try to teach. You know, just try to, you know, um, bring everybody into the mind of, of me. You know, uh, the, the, the way I process the game, the way I saw things, and um, that, that's what I'm going to do. I'm just going to, you know, do my best. Obviously, it's going to, you know, in the beginning, this will be my first time actually being play-by-play with the, with, the, with the Rays. I was a pre- and post-game, so it's a little bit different. 
Um, but like I said, I'm just going to, you know, go out there and, and, you know, just try to make it conversational um, and, you know, just try to make it seem like I'm right on the couch, um, you know, with the viewers and, and just talking baseball. I like that a lot. You have to let me know if you get caught up in a little bit of being a fan because you look at yeah. like Morneau, who is so analytical and so conversational he's as he's doing yeah, that. Yeah. yeah. But then you look at a guy like Trevor Plouffe that is fun in a completely different way because yeah. he gets excited yeah. like he's still in the dugout. Do you see shades yeah. of maybe both of them seeping into what you're going to do? I can see that. I think uh, like I like how you definitely describe Morneau. He's definitely way more analytical, a little bit more serious. I think for me, I think, yeah, I think it will probably be a little bit of a mixture. I'm not as loose and as fun as, as Trevor Plouffe, but I think I'm somewhere. Nobody is, man. Nobody is. Go yeah, ahead. he's. I don't think I've ever had a serious conversation with that guy. <laughs> um, <laughs> uh, so, yeah, I think I'll be somewhere in between in the middle. Um, you know, I'm, I'm, I, can be, I can be a little dry at times, like as far as my humor, um, but I think that will be great for TV. So we're talking broadcasting with you because Dave and I have done that before. I want you to talk the art of playing center field with us because – the Twins have yeah. been blessed historically at that position, whether it was Kirby Puckett, Torrey <laughs> Hunter, yourself. Carlos Gomez, Ben Revere to a certain extent. You know, defensively especially, this team has had very, very good center fielders. They're hoping they do now this season if Byron Buxton is back in center field. I know last year when we talked, you know, you couldn't speak in detail because none of us really could about the injuries he was truly going through. But knock on wood, everything seems okay right now. What's the most difficult part about playing center field? And maybe to piggyback, What's the toughest part about adjusting to being back in center field after missing any kind of time? Well, I would say the, the most difficult thing about playing center field is, you know, having to be the general um, out there in the outfield and, you know, having a, a huge responsibility of covering so much ground and, you know, making sure that your left fielder and your right fielder um, are, you know, in unison. And, um, you know, just like I said, once again, just, you know, just taking charge out there. Um, but that's something that Byron's done his entire career since, you know, being drafted by the, by the Twins, what, back in 2012. And, you know, I don't think that, you know, he'll have trouble um, readjusting to that. Um, but for him, I think, you know, not playing center field for such a long time, it's going to take – it might take him some time to get his legs back underneath him and get kind of used to um, just the grind of, of playing center field because it is gruesome, like I said, um, with – just the amount of amount of ground you have to cover and the, and the, and the big responsibility. Um, but when I when I saw him in Twins Fest, uh, when I asked him how he was feeling, um, a big smile came on his face and he looked at me. He said, "It's time. I'm ready. I'm ready to go and I'm ready to get back out there." And um, you know, like I said, uh, or like you said, uh, so far in spring training, he, he's felt good and he's looked good. And um, this is a different ball club when, when he's healthy and when he's out there in center field. No question about that. That's encouraging to hear those kinds of things. It's encouraging to hear you anytime we get to. We're chatting with former Twin and Arts fan. We could put former lots of other teams on there, but we're going to stick with former Twin because we embrace him right to the very end. Go ahead, Dave. I'm actually uh, – go ahead, Darn. No, I was just going to say former Twin. I love it. Yeah, I mean, we're sticking with I that. At heart. Yeah. I can yeah, name was, the other teams it. if you want me to. I'm choosing not to. No. Go ahead. And, no. and so I'm going to actually ask a question that's going to ask you to kind of delve into that. We were talking earlier today about things that the Twins have been fortunate with. And one of those things, to me, is the Metrodome because it was such a unique... I mean, it, it wasn't a fantastic place at the end, but it was such a unique building and field. I'm wondering, when you left Metrodome, saw Target Field, and then to the different teams you went, how different was the Metrodome, and did it really give you a home field advantage? Well, as you were... Talking and before you just said home field advantage, that, that was the 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 thing that I that was sticking out in my brain as far as it being, you know, just that the ultimate uh, home field advantage. We, you know, as, as a ball club, I felt like Terry Ryan and and Bill Smith and Rob Anthony and, and just the entire front office they did, did a really good job at building a ball club around the Metrodome. You know, we we couldn't slug with the White Sox and the Tigers in, in, in our division, um, but we what we could do was was out athlete them. And so, you know, you didn't need big hitters. You, you know, you had myself and, and Alexi Casilla, Nick Puntos of the world who, you know, we were contact hitters. And um, it, it just made it a lot easier for us to be able to, con- to compete um, in our division. Um, but, you know, moving from there to target field, it, it was a big adjustment um, for, I think, the entire, the entire roster, the entire team. Um, you know, all of our numbers um, changed um, as far as power. 
um, you know, target field, especially for the left-handed hitters. You know, you go down the road, you look at Joe, his numbers uh, from, uh, from a power standpoint weren't the same. I didn't hit many home runs, but my power went down. Morneau, same thing. Kubel, um, you know, the list goes on as far as, you know, just, you know, guys not being able to um, just adjust and it just being a different dimension. You know, you have the elements that, that, that come into play. Um, as well, and so you know, you kind of had to, as a, as a left-handed hitter, ha- had to alter your swing just a little bit, um, and think more gap to gap versus you know, getting the ball in the air in the Metrodome, where you know if you hit it at a certain trajectory, more than likely it was going to be over that right field baggie, and so um, so that, I would say those were the the biggest things. And um, what was the other question you said? How was it going from the Metrodome? Yeah, to, to some to, of the other stadiums yeah. that I played, or, yep. or Target Field. Which one was it? I'm sorry. The answer to that is yes. Target yeah, it's a Field first. And collective then, effort. Yeah. yeah. Um, Target Field compared to some of the other stadiums that I played played at. I mean, Target Field is still one of my favorite stadiums. I, I got to be honest with you. I, who you know, whoever, whoever you know, uh, you know design that and and they really did a really good job because when you when I still go back there it it still has that same feel as it did for me in two, in 2010 um just it, you know they've they've done a good job at keeping it up um the the you know the the dimensions are you know on point um you know it's just a it's a, it's a really beautiful ballpark uh, I'm trying to think when I was in Washington that that was a newer ballpark Nats Park um was really nice I enjoyed playing there and then San Francisco um, that was a, a really nice ballpark as, as well, just the historic um, McCovey, McCovey Cove in right field. Mm-hmm. Um, but once again, like I said, when I go to Target Field, um, when I'm close close up on the field for some of the ceremonies that I've got an opportunity to go back for for some of my teammate, former teammates, and when I watch the, the game you know, in the stands, it, it's, a, it's a beautiful atmosphere, beautiful vantage point no matter where you are. So, Denard, I got a question today from a buddy of mine who ironically is a listener but also a teacher in the state of Florida. And I know Florida obviously is is home for you too, but he wanted me to ask you this. The shift in the game to the focus on power has changed lineups to you've got leadoff hitters that are 30, 40 home runs guys. When you played and let off, that wasn't the case. What's your take on the different looking lineups these days as to who bats in what spot? Well, I mean, yeah, it's still, you know, to a core, I'm, I'm a, even though I'm not old, I don't consider myself old. No, happy I do belated. Consider myself a, big 4 0 earlier, right? Yeah, man. Yeah, I'm struggling with that, but yeah, I appreciate it. <laughs> um, no, I, yeah, I, to, to, to the core, I, I'm still an old school heart. And, um, you know, I, I remember the, I remember the, uh, or just, I, I just enjoy watching, you know, the, the, the lineups when, you know, they have, you know, more prototypical speed guys at the top of the lineup um, because it's more of a diversified, if you will, lineup. You know, and now in comparison, now you look at the lineups and everybody for the most part looks the same And um, as far as, you know, trying to hit home runs. and um, But, you know, I covered the Rays last year. They had one of the better leadoff hitters in the game even though he wasn't a prototypical leadoff hitter, and it was Yandy Diaz. Right. Um, you know, he had a high on-base percentage. Um, he, you know, had good at-bats, didn't expand the strike zone. Um, so even though it looked different, it was, you know, it just was, it was just not the same. You know, he went, once he got on first base, he was not looking to steal the base, steal any bases. Um, so it's just, yeah, it's just a different ball game now. You know, guys aren't, you know, trying to uh, advance and, you know, by, by stealing or, or put, putting a bunt down there, you know, they're, they're relying on, you know, either the guy behind them hitting a home run or hitting an extra base hit and them scoring from first base. So we're talking with Denard Spam, going to do some work for the Rays and the Twins this year. Two of the better young teams in baseball, I would think, because, you know, we know the Yankees and Red Sox will be talked about to almost a nauseating level. People are forgetting that the Rangers are the defending champs in this sport. But sure. when you think of young talent, the Twins and Rays kind of jump off the map, don't they? Yeah, but both of those. When you look at the, their rosters, both of those teams, you know, have complete teams, and um, you know, so it's so easy to kind of overlook them um, because you have, you know, all of the other teams that have, you know, some bigger names. But um, you gotta, you gotta really, um, you know, just love what you know both of these organizations, um, what they've done with their roster and, and using, you know, their minor league system to continuously um, replenish. You know, every year it seems like both teams, you know, lose key players, and you're like, ah, they're going to suffer from that. And then you got you know guys from the from the minor leagues come up and and uh, and fill 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 those holes. So Denard, we've been talking about the art of playing center field. I'm wondering if I can hit you with one question that's going to feel like it came out of left field. But 
in the state of Minnesota, the PWHL is here. Professional women's hockey, that's got a big spot in your home, does it not? It, it does. It does. And, uh, yeah, my wife, uh, we were just talking about this, I think, what, a couple nights ago. She just was just so happy to see, you know, how how far the game has gone um, for, for the women and that in the women's space um, as far as hockey. And um, she just, you know, obviously she looks at herself as more uh, of a pioneer and, and helping, you know, the game get to where it is now. Um, but she did say, you know, she wished that she was coming out of college now so that she would get the opportunity Right. Um, so that she could get the opportunity to, to play under, you know, under the circumstances that, that the girls are playing under now. But it was a long road, and, and she's proud to, to, you know, obviously play for the University of Minnesota and for her country. You know, Brian, one of the things we should ask at some point is about the Molson sponsorship where they, where they put the ad where the nameplates would be and the nameplates down a little lower so you can see who the players Yeah, the, the ponytail preventative advertising, but go ahead. Yeah, so, Denard, you talked about it a second ago, and I'm wondering your opinion on pressure on pitchers. So the speed part of the game really messed with pitchers because they, they had to pay more attention, and the home run time, they're just focusing on the hitter. And I'm wondering if a team, and the Twins are a good example because they have some speed now and some smart base runners. Is there a way to put additional pressure on those pitchers uh, to maybe almost get some more home runs? Hold on one second. Hold on. Go ahead. I'm sorry. My yeah. son. No, no. no, no. Ask me a question. I'm sorry. Yeah, no <laughs> problem at all. I was, I was wondering, you had talked about pressuring teams, stolen bases, yeah. fast players. And I'm wondering if teams can utilize that speed and that pressure to actually, because pitchers are really able right now to focus on hitters. I'm wondering if they can use that pressure to, to help actually the home run hitters that come up later because the pitchers are not going to be quite as laser focused. Well, you know what? One of my, one of my jobs as a base runner when I got to first base was to always make that pitcher think that I was going to be stealing. And the reason why I did that was, a lot of times I would not even be going, but the reason why I would do that was to hopefully try to distract the pitcher in hopes that he would leave a cookie over the plate for Joe Maurer or Justin Morneau or whoever was up behind me. So I do see I do see athletes and, and, and guys who can steal bases being able to affect the game and disrupt uh, pitchers from you know executing what they want to execute. I want to close with this. Dave used the word pressure, and it segues nicely into a question I'm just curious about. I just asked you about the young talent that the Rays and Twins have. And even though they're young, they're probably slotted into starting positions. But because they're young, maybe not. So spring training, you look at a guy like Matt Walner, who struck out a bunch again yesterday. And I believe his spring training batting average is now under 100. I look at that as a fan and I kind of shrug my shoulders because I say, wake me up in you know, a week and a half when they're playing for real and you know, let's see what his numbers are then. How much pressure do you think players put on themselves in the spring? And obviously it varies if you know, you're cementing into a 3-4-5 hitter or you know, a young guy trying to make the team, but how much pressure is there to perform, you think, in spring training contests? I, like you said, I think it just depends on you know, your – your track record, you know, uh, where you are on the depth chart, I think every player knows where they are. Coming into spring training, you know if you're competing for a job or if you're not competing for a job. Um, I remember my first year um, in 08, had a really good year. I came up from AAA, kind of came onto the scene. After the season was over with, I told myself that I still have to come into spring training and win a job. Even though I solidified myself as a big leaguer, everybody knew I was a big leaguer, but in my mind I told myself, I didn't want to believe that. I wanted to keep that at edge and that chip on my shoulder. And so I remember coming in into 2009, already, you know, supposedly having a job. And I struggled all spring training. And Guardy could see that I was putting a lot of pressure on myself. Because in my mind, I have to hit 300, 400 in order to make this ball club. Right. And I remember him coming to me uh, one particular game. He, you know, I was at the end of the bench with my head down, and he looked at me and he goes, "You're on this ball club, son. Relax. We, we, we know we know what you can do. Just be ready to go April 1st." And so, if I'm Rocco Baldelli and Matt Walner is already on this ball club, that's what I'm going to tell him. You know, Matt Walner he had a pretty solid season last year. Correct. You know, if he's you know he, more than likely he's on this ball club. So, you know. It, it, 
you can't tell him that. I mean, or, or he can't tell himself that. It, need, it, it needs to come from either the manager or coach or one of the leaders on the ball club to say, hey, man, we know what you can do. We know what you can do. Just just get your work in, and we'll, we'll, we'll be ready to count on you April 1st when the season starts and the lights are bright. Understood. It would certainly change the mindset. As a journalist, you talked about stealing. I'm going to steal one more question, then we'll let you go, and I can't thank you enough for doing this. You mentioned as a center fielder, as the general, making sure your left field, right field are in the right spots and you know, you're patrolling the outfield properly. I'm going to give you a tough question, and you know, it might be tough to do on the spot as well. Who's the best left fielder or right fielder that you played next to and caught yourself just kind of in awe of what they could do? Best left fielder and right fielder. Ooh, that's a tough one right there. I shouldn't have closed oh, with it. I should have given you more time. Yeah. No, no, that's good, though. This is good. I'm trying to I'm, – I'm just taking inventory, like, all the, you know, the, all the all my teammates and obviously the, the teams. I don't want to make sure I don't leave anybody short. Maybe the best way to uh, phrase it is who required you to cover the least amount of ground? Who were the rangiest corner outfielders you played with? Well, I would say when I was in center field and, and Ben Rivera in right field or left field, that obviously made my job a lot easier. Um, and I'm trying to think who else. Um I want to say, I want to say, um, I'm gonna go with Jason Worth when I was in Washington. He was oh, pretty yeah. good out there. Nice. And my, Michael Kadire was good as well. I'm sorry, I got to give love to my, my other no, Minnesota. No problem mate. there. He and I were born yeah. the exact same day. I have no problem with Michael oh, Kadire. Love. Okay. Happy belated yep. to you once again. Thank you for putting up with all my texts to put this together. We love when we have you on the show. Oh, we hope we can do good. it again. This is awesome. Let's definitely do it again. This is good practice for me. So great. There you go. Any, anytime you need a little broadcasting <laughs> right. pregame or broadcasting tailgate, we will happily do it with you. Thank you for the time right. once Thanks, again. Denard. All right. All right, guys. Absolutely. That's our guy, Denard Span. Man, that is fun. That was great. And you know what? I'm really looking forward to listening to him now because some of the answers were fantastic. And He's going to do well. That, I want to hear that stuff on TV. He's going to do very well. Yeah. We're so happy for the time. We're going to buy everything that Denard Span is selling when he's on the air. That's a segue. We're going to play buy or sell next. Stick around. We'll be right back. Hey, guys. Time to get in on the action for the biggest moments in basketball with Prize Picks, America's number one fantasy sports app. Just select two or more players. Pick more or less on their projections, place your entry, and win up to 100 times your money. Right now, Prize Picks will match your first deposit of up to $100. Just download the Prize Picks app and use the code GET100. That's code GET100 on Prize Picks for a first deposit match of up to $100. Prize Picks. Pick more. Pick less. It's that easy. We are always looking for a good buy here on the Northland Sports Page. We are not going to say goodbye for another half an hour. We've got a couple of segments, including Vency Glenn. Let's just say Vency wasn't the biggest Kirk fan on the planet. I'm really interested to hear what he has to say today. Well, and I've told you that. I had some friends contact me and say, I hope you have Vency on this weekend because I want to get his take on Kirk. Well, I'll tell you how the text between us went. The minute Kirk signed with Atlanta, and I mean the minute, I texted Vency, do you want to talk a little bit about life post number eight this weekend? All caps. My absolute pleasure with about every emoji possible. <laughs> so he's buying life without Kirk. We're going to play buy or sell in a moment. But speaking of people buying in, they were buying into an event that you had recently as well. Yeah, we did our evening construct tomorrow for the for the region uh, on Tuesday night. It was a construct tomorrow is a kids program uh, for high school kids during the week or during the day. So we've started to do a night event. And because people are over 18, you know, they're kind of eligible to be hired. And Brian, that night we had three hundred some people show Love up. Love to hear that. And and at least and I know there's more than this, right? But I was talking to the the roofing union, and between them and the and the and the contractors, mainly Jamar, um, they hired ten people that night. Like so, three hundred people came, and ten people um, went to a specific trade in a specific company. So I'm sure there were three, four, five, you know, other people that got jobs that night. Um, and so if you think about the percentages, I hope next year we go from 300 to 500 and do the same. It was such a fan and everybody was thrilled. One of my coworkers lost her voice because she was talking to so many people. Like that's the sort of thing that kind of event goes under, uh, recognized, but it really is more impactful than some others. Well, there's nothing wrong with hearing about people getting jobs. Speaking of which, we have a job each and every Saturday, thanks to our great sponsors. Absolutely. And the original, Arola Architecture Studio, took care of us when times were bad and, and uh, the pandemic was going on. Got like, to have dinner with Ryan this week. It's tough to have a bad time with that guy. Shout out to Ryan Arola, not only for his sponsorship, but his friendship too. Absolutely. Hoops Brewing, OAR Holdings, Krause Heating and Cooling, your carrier HVAC authorized dealer, Advantage Emblem and Screen Printing, 
the Blackwoods Group, including locations Tavern on the Hill, Blackwater, Two Harbors location, Proctor, and London Road. Can I talk a little bit about that Proctor location in conjunction with the Easter Sunday dinner? Because, again, they've got it available to pick up. They've got an Easter Sunday family meal, serve six. Total price is $165. Available for pickup in Proctor or delivery pretty much all over, I believe, with the number of locations. How to place your order is pretty easy. The email is super simple, easter at blackwoods.com. You can also call Jessica at 218-625-6147. But you got to do it by Friday, folks. Yeah, and the other thing, while you're there, take a tour of the uh, event center in Proctor. Right. Because How many times have we gone into the St. Luke Sports and Event Center and passed Blackwoods on the way and thought, that place is always fun? Well, and think about all the events that you have during the summer that what you really need is the location. Right. Right? And and you don't want to screw around with a whole lot of things. You, you don't want to see if that company over there does something or that building over there has something. Just use the Proctor um, event center and it's attached right to Blackwoods. Get it done. And everybody likes good service. I'm not sure the Blackwoods family could treat you and I any better. Correct. hundred percent. Mall Royal bottle shop, Stewart's bike, sports and trophies, Kohler Toyota and Kohler Hyundai and comfort systems of Duluth. So absolutely. When it comes to our sponsors, we are buying what they are selling. We encourage you to do the same. It is time to play by or sell. And the way that we do it is I'm going to give a statement regarding each of the four major sports leagues, not teams, but leagues. If Dave agrees with what I'm saying, he's going to say buy and tell me why. If he disagrees, he's going to say sell and tell me why. He's got great takes. He also gets to determine the order. We should keep stats on this one. Oh, we should. We yeah. should have a long time ago. Uh, agreed. I'd be interested to see where we are. Agreed. All I right. know where Justin May would be. Well, I'll buy that. I think that was his answer to just about all of it. Let's see. Let's start with the wild. Let's start with the NHL. I was going to say, you want to keep stats? 0 for 1. 0 for I one. said leagues, yes. not teams. Yes, yes, but, yes, yes. but you're lucky today. Luck was a the theme in our number one. But... This is about the wild, so that'll work. So last Sunday, less than 24 hours after we got off the air, because, of course, last week was a night show. Last Sunday, the Wild won a game in overtime by pulling Marc-Andre Fleury to go four on three. Matt Boldy's one-timer wins it. What would have happened is this. Nashville could have scored on an open net in overtime. Had that happened, the Minnesota Wild no longer would have gotten their point for forcing it to overtime. I'm just going to give you kind of a fun question. Buy or sell that you had any clue that rule existed? Because I don't learn a lot about the four majors very often. That one, I was like, okay, no one ever told me that. But I wonder how often it comes up. Yeah, no, I've never heard of that rule before, ever. Like, I think it's because nobody would ever even really think about doing that when possession of the puck in overtime is so important. Possession is nine-tenths of the law, especially in hockey. But. I mean, you think about it. When we when we are fans of a team that have to win a game, we're. St- I mean, we did this at, during the tournament when Hermantown was playing. It was like, yeah, there's five minutes. What's Matamidi left, waiting for? But nobody plays right. tomorrow. Right. So so pull your goalie with five minutes left, and that sounds kind of dumb. Well, and the funny the thing was, idea. we were picking on Matamidi the day before. They would have had a game, but you want to be in the title game versus third place. We thought the Zephyrs waited too long, and they played it beautifully. Absolutely. So I, th- I think that— So you're buying? You never heard of that before? I ever heard of it. So here's my question, because I'll buy it too, because I was baffled. I had no clue. But here's my question. Why? Because I get what you're saying about you got to roll the dice, you need wins. And that's what I thought John Hines was doing. Like, hey, this is now or never if you're going to do a playoff push with this team. You lose, you lose. You win, you're still in it. So I understood that. You know, hey, way to show off some cojones for going for the two points— in overtime by going four on three. If you're willing to roll the dice and keep your net empty, whose idea was it to take the point away? I would say you're already gambling enough. Why make it, you know, double whammy? Well, they may they may not want um, teams to do what what the Wild did. Like, but if you're going to outlaw that in overtime in some way, why they, not outlaw they, it altogether? Yeah, they they didn't outlaw it. They they said who has the cojones There's a penalty to do this. for this kind of thing. Yeah, but um, the, they needed the two point. The other thing it did is it showed the team that Heinz believes in them. And, yeah. and that's a huge thing. I'm still intrigued by whether or not they make the playoffs, but whether or not John Heinz has made the decision for Bill Guerin going forward very difficult. Absolutely. I think we thought he was a Band-Aid. I wonder if he's a permanent stitch yeah, instead. I think you might be right. It's going to be interesting. All right, one down, three to go. Uh, let's go with the NBA. All right, so the NBA, the Timberwolves, to quote Chris Finch, are a little bit banged up. They had a split of an L.A. trip. Beat the Clippers in a game that I didn't think they would. Fell to the Lakers in a game I actually thought they would win until I realized Rudy Gobert wasn't playing. They got out remounted by a ridiculous margin. So having said that, I know Cat's out. But buy or sell, a healthy Rudy Gobert is actually more important than a healthy Cat. 
I'm going to sell that. I think that Rudy makes a difference, and and Davis wouldn't have gotten 31 rebounds by himself. But I think Cat mitigates some of that and gives them more offense. So I don't think he, I don't think the Timberwolves get out rebounded like that if Cat's there, and he's going to score 25 points. Gobert, they won't get out rebounded, but he's going to score 10. And so I think that Cat is more important. But the fact that I have to think about it right. tells you all you need to know. All right. I love everything that you said, and I completely disagree with the overall answer. <laughs> I think your takes and your points are very well made. But I'm going to buy that a healthy Rudy is more important. And here's why. Two words. Depth chart. With Cat not out there, Nas Reed is. They're kind of one of the same. Emphasis on kind of. With Rudy not out there, you don't have another player like that. No. You don't have a defender like that. But you if, don't have a rebounder like that. If they run Cat out there and Nas at the same time, you still got two six foot eleven seven footers who can do, you know, kind of the same. Okay, thing. Okay, but what if you, you run don't Nas and Rudy thought. out there, you still have that. Yeah, or Nas, Nas and Cat. And the other thing is, if or, you're I mean, as, if you're as adamant as you are that Cat may not be here next year for financial reasons, I want to see more of Nas and Rudy out there yeah, together. Yeah, that's a whole different right. conversation. But it still plays into this one. Absolutely, and I do. Th- they almost have to. It's a little like Kirk. You and almost have to. If I'm being brutally honest, part of my answer is just my affinity for Rudy Gobert, and I've had it from the second they got him. Yeah, so that's you just were me. You a Utah guy. If I, I right. kind of was with Rudy Gobert. I have no problem with that yep. at all. Yep. All right, two down, two to go. All right, let's go with the Major League Baseball because that's coming up, but the big stuff's in the NFL. All right, so we already asked Tenard to span this, but I wanted to ask you this. I know I said to you, the Twins are getting whipped kind of routinely in spring training. Are you concerned? And you said no, and I completely agree. However, individual performances kind of raise an eyebrow when you have young guys trying to figure it out or trying to cement themselves. Matt Walner is struggling. There were times last year where Matt Walner was struggling. Buy or sell, you're worried about him really truly being an everyday guy. Well, I think you have to be. Yes. Um, the answer is yes, I'm buying. Um the concern is, as Denard kind of explained, you know, Walner needs to believe he's the guy. And if he's if he's pushing to that point where he's whiffing on everything, he's Joey Gallo. And, yeah. Joe, and Joey Gallo... Well, by the had, way, is your everyday first baseman announced in Washington this week. Yeah. Joey, Joey Gallo had, you know, a level of cap that, that uh, allowed him to play the entire season, right? Because people know what he can do. Right. But Walner can't be that guy. Like Walner, Walner turns into Brent Rooker if he's that guy, and he and he's just going to be gone. And the Twins have guys in the minors who can play outfield, and that's kind of where I go because if I look at just the word worried, I would sell because I'm not worried because of who else they have for options. I'm worried if I met Walner specifically. So if you're worried about an individual, the answer is buy. If you're worried about the team, the answer is sell. Yeah, I think because I love Willie Castro. You've got Margot if Buxton is healthy. You can find another left fielder. You got a ton of guys that could be a DH. You got Austin Martin who can come up and play right now. He may not be the world's greatest, but he's not going to go 0 for 15 with nine strikeouts. And if you had to, just use Matt Walner as a late game pinch hitter to try to change things with one swing till he figures it out. What's wrong with that? It's Joey Gallo. That's what that is. Like that's what he ended up being. It's a cheaper at the end one. Of the year. It is a cheaper one. But you remember the game you and I went to, and that's what they did. They brought Gallo out late to hit right. a pinch, and it was. Strike one, strike two, strike three, over. <laughs> well, my favorite was I attended the game where Joey Gallo was in an extra innings and tried to bunt to win it, and his bunt almost went into short right and was caught by the first baseman. So, you know, everyday execution was not part of Joey Gallo's game. Yeah, so let's finish with the National Football League. All right, to close with the NFL, and this isn't going to be a close just of this segment because we're going to do a lot of it in the final segment with Vincey, but so the Vikings made a big move to acquire another first-round pick yesterday morning. They now have picks number 11 and 23 in the draft. The consensus is this is the move before the move, and I agree with that too, so I'm kind of giving away my buy or sell answer already. But buy or sell, if there's any chance that you see this Vikings team keep both of those. Oh, 100%. 100% chance, buy? yeah. Because, I mean, let's be honest. If it goes one, two, three, the way it's supposed to go, four is not going to draft a quarterback, but five is a Chargers. Uh, tell me if Harbaugh loves McCarthy like he does. Right. And and six is a Giants, and and – we looked at their quarterback they need somebody. roster. Yeah, they are absolutely a threat to, to draft. So if the Vikings can't get uh, into that and get one of the top four, yeah, they, they're going to draft at 11 and 23, or they're going to trade back and get more. And you know what? I've said this for two years, Brian. That roster is paper thin. It's not a terrible thing if that happens. I'm going to buy that it's possible just because Quasey does what I think most of us deem as unthinkable. It's kind of become his norm. 
So it is very possible that they stay at 11 and 23. I hope to God they don't. I'm just going to put it out there. But it depends on who they're truly infatuated with. Because if it is about getting Drake May, you've got to move. You've got to have the Patriots on line one right now. If you're okay with Penix, McCarthy slips far enough, or Lord help us, Bo Nix, obviously you're going to be able to sit where you are. Yep. I hope they don't because I'll tell you what, they've got their fan base awfully excited about the possibilities right now. And if it's just, we're going to stay at 11 and 23 and fill whatever need we see fit. If you walk out of this draft without your future quarterback, this is a complete dud all around. I agree with that, but I, I agree with what you said. I think that at 11, if McCarthy's there, you do it. And if 23, if Penix is there, you do it. But you, you can't draft um, you can't draft a guy at 11 or you're right. going to kill him. Can I put a caveat on this? If you could get, and in the division you probably couldn't, but if you could get, because time's a waste in on Justin Fields, if you could get him for a third or fourth on draft day, and not have to draft any of these guys, do you? Yes. That, to me, because of what I said earlier, you have to get a chance to see him work to decide if you want to pay him money. Uh, if he can come in and be behind Darnold, and then you get to see him in the second half once he's acclimated, I think that would be a perfect situation. But the other thing I said is, if if it's up to me and I can't get the quarterback, I'm dealing 11 way back for a haul. I want picks, 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 because we need talent. Like I said, the coolest thing for you should be your radio co-host who eye rolls all of your draft analysis and every other year, but this one won't be this time around. <laughs> Remember in the COVID years, we were special on the draft? I wonder if the folks at Town Square would let us do something similar. I bet you they'd let us do something. We'll have to find out. A little on-air business production meeting. Yeah. Something could, could be brewing in late April. Something better be for the Vikings. There are a lot of holes to fill on this roster, but it's been exciting the way they've approached it so far. No, I agree. I think that they've they brought intrigue to it now. I mean, they can do anything they want now. Again, I know a lot of people didn't. My take is this. I liked the hundreds of millions dollar quarterback that the Vikings just got rid of. I liked him. I will die on that yeah. sword, if you will. But without him, the financial freedom to kind of play a little bit of fantasy football right now is pretty fun. I agree. I liked him a lot. I wish he had a different uh, a different ending, right? Because he's well, I do feel like he, I do feel like he hoodwinked me a little bit into how good of a man he is. I think he's a good father, good person. But as far as great teammate and the money doesn't matter, yeah, nobody's convinced about that anymore. Yeah, no one is. His agent should be in the Hall of Fame. Right. I was going to say his agent. I just had my annual evaluation at the day job this week, and it went fine. Wish I would have had that guy. It would have gone doubly fine. <laughs> Right, or you'd have got to go someplace else for triple the money. Right, but I'll tell you this. We should be Vincey Glenn's agent because we get him a gig every week. He's Let's right around the corner to close the show. Stick around on the Northland Sports page. We will be right back. This podcast is sponsored by Ramp. Are you the decision maker in your company? Consider this. For the first time in decades, there's a better option for a corporate card and spend management platform. Meet Ramp, the only corporate card and spend management system designed to help you spend less money so you can make more. Most corporate credit cards offer points as incentives. But those points amount to less than their worth in real cash value. Ramp's business cards offer you cash back, real money in your pocket. Plus, you control who spends what with each vendor. And Ramp's software collects and verifies receipts automatically, which means you'll stop wasteful spending and close your books in hours instead of days. Businesses that use Ramp add up to 5% to their bottom line the first year. If you're a decision maker, adding Ramp could be one of the best decisions you've ever made. And now get $250 when you join Ramp for free. Just go to ramp.com slash easy. Ramp.com slash easy. R-A-M-P dot com slash easy. Cards issued by Sutton Bank and Celtic Bank members of DIC. Terms and conditions apply. It's the safety dance. That means our favorite safety is back. He's part of Drawing Lines, courtesy of Roll Architecture Studio. Got a chance to check out their new office down at Canal Park earlier this week. And... Ryan was telling me about a business lead that he got thanks to this radio show, so we appreciate that. We appreciate a Roll Architecture Studio and all of our great sponsors. That's got to be a crazy thing to be an architecture and then make your own office. Like, you can be as creative as you want. I need to go down there and see that. Well, the speaking greatest part is he was speaking to one of his coworkers, and they ran to him with the phone, and they said, somebody's on line one and needs you because they heard your name on the radio. That was music to my ears. Oh, heck yes, absolutely. Uh, and these are our sponsors, right? Stewart Sport Bike Sports and Trophies. Kohler Toyota and Kohler Hyundai, Comfort Systems, Hoops Brewing, OAR Holdings, Kraus Heating and Cooling, your carrier HVAC authorized dealer, Advantage Emblem and Screen Printing, The Blackwoods Group, including their locations on London Road, in Proctor, in Two Harbors, Blackwater and Tavern on the Hill, and Arola Architecture Studio. Again, Arola Architecture Studio brings you Drawing Lines. Drawing Lines has been basically the Vincey Glenn segment for several weeks. Took a few weeks off after the Super Bowl 
brief off season in football. We learned that obviously with all the news this week too. Yeah, it was a heck of a week, and and I can't wait. I got a couple of questions for Vency I want to ask, so this is going to be fun. All right, we'll get right to it, Vency Glenn. First of all, good morning, sir. Happy first Saturday without Kirk Cousins. Let's just call it that. <laughs> good morning, guys. How are you? Very uh, good, very good. I always enjoy to talk to you. And let's just start there because if you wanted to start your segment with A B, I told you so. You could because. I thought Kirk was a good quarterback, and I, I'm still okay with that, but I thought he was a good teammate, a good leader, and it wasn't about the money. And you basically told me, this guy will chase the bag. And I'll tell you what, you look at the Falcons' contract to him, and I'll just bow and say, Vincey, you were right. Go ahead. <laughs> no, it's not about being right, but if you play in the NFL long enough, you understand people. You understand the game, and you understand what a person brings to a team. Uh, it's leadership, it's, uh, it's continuity, it's uh, communication, all of the above. And being at your work on a day-to-day basis, you, Dave, you know, you have to communicate. You know which people at work are working, and you know which people at work are just going to work. So yep. there's a big difference. Even though you're all for the same cause and all that, I'm not saying that he's a bad person by any means because I don't know him personally or anything like that. I'm talking about what he brings to try to win a championship. Because that's why you play sports. It's not just to get accolades. You're going out there, giving it on the line from childhood to the pros, risking your neck injuries, risking your leg injuries, arms, things that can hamper you for life to win a championship. Period. That's why you give it up like that, because you want to win. That's what competitiveness is, that you want to gain the edge over your opponent or whatever the situation may be. I agree and with that. Some people just don't bring that. Right. Because that segues nicely on the other side. What is it with you safeties? Because you got a guy like Harrison Smith that says I'll restructure again to stay on this team. Kind of the polar opposite of Kirk Cousins' approach. Well, Harrison Smith is, is smart. He you know he only has a couple years left. He's comfortable with the organization. The organization has been good to him. He's been good to the organization in the city. He's played at a high level for a long time. His family is comfortable there. I don't know if he has kids or anything like that. And so all that plays into it, man. And it becomes a time. And these guys make so much money, man, but it's not a money issue. I don't have to keep playing a long, long time because I need the money and need to stack it up for the end of my career. These guys are making millions. They got things going on in the business world outside of football they can get into because of the money that they make. And so it wasn't like us maybe have to go get a part-time job in the, in the off-season and just keep grinding and grinding just to make ends meet, you know? So it's a different day and time, and you have to analyze and assess the game what's good for you and your family these days, like Donald in the, with the Rams. Yeah, how about that? I was surprised by that. Hey, Vincey, the, uh, the Atlanta Falcons, uh, by paying Kirk Cousins the money they did, did they make – like the did the Vikings get a gift from God that Atlanta gave him so much money that they couldn't match? Like I guess what I'm asking is, if he'd have gone to Atlanta for a couple extra dollars, would it have been difficult as part of the Vikings or Vikings fandom even to watch him walk away? Now it depends on which Viking fan you're looking at. You looking at the one that's the Kirk Cousins fan. Or you looking at the one that wants to win a championship and win a Super Bowl, the old nice. school, like you say. So there's there's a couple kind of fans fans out there. But let me tell you this about Atlanta. Every since Atlanta went to the Super Bowl and they had that delay at halftime and they blew a twenty some point lead in the second half and lost. And Arthur Blank went down on the sideline with his team in the second half. Arthur Blank ain't been right. So right. giving somebody ninety million dollars <laughs> that ain't won nothing, something wrong with Austin Blake. So, but I'll say this, and I'll end it with this: I don't care what nobody says. The one thing I'll say about Kirk Cousins about being great is he has the greatest agent that he does. ever ever walked the earth. So, He's the Jerry Maguire. Show me the money, yes. and that dude is getting it. No doubt. Hey, Vincey. So. The Vikings are going to end up drafting a quarterback, or they're going to go with Sam Darnold. Um, I wonder when you were or playing, both. when you were playing, and you were sitting back with the other defensive backs, watching a kid quarterback. At what point did you say, 
yeah, okay, we got something, or, oh, man, we're going to be stuck with this guy. What? Wh- how long did it take, and, and what was kind of the, the tells? Well, I always try to put the game in perspective to when I play, and it's different now, so you approach it the way you play it, and you see it, and have to go about your daily business. Man, you need a tough guy, period. Back then, you were going to get hit at a, as a quarterback after the throw doing the throw, <laughs> before the throw. You know what I'm saying? So it was more than just can he throw and say, oh, he has talent. Yeah, man, I've seen a lot of guys have talent. I've seen guys come in the NFL running 4 4 3 4 4 you know, low 4 4 I've seen guys, speed guys. But speed and all that doesn't equivalent to a football player. At the end of the day, your manhood is going to get checked on a regular basis, and you have to answer the call to that. And so that, that's how I judge people. Can they handle the moment? Because it's all about the moment in time. Can you handle that one moment in time where you got to make that play or they need you and you either fold or you make it? That's, that's what the great ones live for, that moment where they come through. Vency, we've been talking to you about Vikings football for the better part of a few years now on this show. And one of the things that you've stressed to us each time is when the Vikings signed Kirk Cousins – for the amount of money that they did, they changed their identity as an organization to basically an offense first team. Whether it's Sam Darnold or rookie du jour, that identity for now is changing back to Brian Flores and the defense is going to have to win us some games. Take the Grenard signing, the Cashman signing, even the Tillery signing, different phases like that. As a defensive guy, do you love this idea? Go back to the old days kind of thing? Absolutely. With any organization, if you look at the organizations that are going to – man, the Kansas City Chiefs won the Super Bowl because of their defense. Yes, they did. They got to the Super Bowl because of their defense. So everybody talks about Mahomes, but he knows. He knows how many opportunities that his defense gave him to score. He knows how many times his defense went out there and corrected the mistakes that him and his offense made. So I'm all about defense, but I'm all about offense. But it's about the chemistry in the locker room. There has to be a balance and appreciation for each other. When the offense, when the defense gets scored on, offense got to be like, don't worry about it. We're going to go right back to school. And when the uh, offense turn makes a turnover, the defense got to be back. Don't worry about it. You'll be back on the field in three, four plays. That's the mentality of loving each other and having that locker room where let's just go ball. doesn't matter the circumstances. Our job is to ball for 60 minutes. Let's just go ball. That is so, the ultimate version. You know, it's, it's how you approach. Go ahead. No, I'm done. No, I think you're correct. That is the ultimate version of complimentary football without question. I want to close with this because you've been never shy about your opinion of Jim Harbaugh and you're a former Charger as well. That team, you know, we talk about free agency frenzy and all these additions and all this good stuff happening for most clubs. Meanwhile, the Chargers don't have Mike Williams anymore. Don't have Keenan Allen anymore. Don't have Austin Eckler anymore. Jim Harbaugh is suddenly walking into a bit of a bare cupboard. I'm going to guess you're not shedding a tear for one of your former franchises or a coach you've never loved much. Well, uh, I'm going to say this about Jim Harbaugh. He's a man that knows what he wants to do, and he has a plan. And if you look at the Charger organization, I know it very, very well. I think he's the best person for that job, to be honest, because he got rid of a lot of things that, not work problems, but work going to help the team win and win a championship. And when you're sitting there in the division with Kansas City and they're winning every year, you know, the Raiders are starting to turn it, uh, starting to turn it around. Denver's starting to turn it around. And you're not, you're not playing championship caliber football and you got the same guys year in and out for the last seven, eight years. You, you have to change the mentality. And the coaches that they bring in there, uh, it's an organization where the owners like to run stuff. But I think Jim Harbaugh said, hey, only way I'm coming is I'm going to run it my way. And Jim Harbaugh wants guys that wants to come to work every day, work hard, be passionate about the game, be into it, and, and be leaders. And they want them to be tough and play defense first. He's going to build a defense before. You can't win without a defense. So you're just giving up plays and thinking your offense is going to put up 28, 31 a game. is just ludicrous because these guys get hurt. And now your receivers are hurt. 
running back mixed up, and now you're playing patchwork football and trying to win at a high level, and that doesn't work. Vincey, so this is right amazing, guy. man. You are amazing as always. I, I bet you thought you were done with us for a while because it's the proverbial off season, but there isn't any in the NFL. You may hear from us week after week after week leading up to the draft because it's going to be the most interesting one for the Vikes in a long time. This was a lot of fun. I know we'll talk in text more than people know, but uh, get ready for most Saturdays from here on out once again, my friend. I appreciate you guys. You ask guys ask football questions, and that's why it's so easy for me to give my perspective. Well, you are, you are welcome with us anytime, my friend. Anytime. Have a great rest of your Saturday. We'll talk again very soon. Thanks, Vincey. Okay, pal. Take care. All right. That's our guy, Vincey Glenn. Whew, what a show. Thank you very much, Dave Hoops. Thank you very much, Red McDonald. Thank you, Denard Spann. Thank you, Vincey Glenn. Thank you, Dave Cook. We're out of here. Thank you, Brian. It was an outstanding weekend. It was. More to come. March Madness. Just when you thought it was only basketball and hockey. Guess what, folks? It's everything. Have a good weekend. See ya. This podcast is sponsored by Ramp. Are you the decision maker in your company? Consider this. For the first time in decades, there's a better option for a corporate card and spend management platform. Meet Ramp, the only corporate card and spend management system designed to help you spend less money so you can make more. Most corporate credit cards offer points as incentives, but those points amount to less than their worth in real cash value. Ramp's business cards offer you cash back, real money in your pocket. Plus, you control who spends what with each vendor. And Ramp software collects and verifies receipts automatically, which means you'll stop wasteful spending and close your books in hours instead of days. Businesses that use Ramp add up to 5% to their bottom line the first year. If you're a decision maker, adding Ramp could be one of the best decisions you've ever made. And now get $250 when you join Ramp for free. Just go to ramp.com slash easy. Ramp.com slash easy. R-A-M-P dot com slash easy. Currents issued by Sutton Bank and Celtic Bank members of DIC terms and conditions apply.